What's up, everybody? How you doing, guys? Grant Hutchinson here. And you know what we're doing. We're talking these practice tips. But before we even get into that, you guys know what's really happening? You get 50% off on all my lessons now, right? For just a short period. So you better hurry up and go get those. I really think you should go get those. How have you guys all been? I hope everyone's doing well during this period. Um, you're able to send in questions now and when the questions come in, I already see something from Nicole, um, looking to involve, uh, my time. I've started recording myself for 15 minutes each day playing with a metronome at, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the best way to improve your time is, is practice. But I, you know, I think if you play to records, that also helps. Um, what's up, Derek? That helps playing to records too. You know, not just a metronome, because a metronome can be boring. But if you play to live records that slow up, what up, Roger, that slow up and get faster, then you're actually playing to real people. That's until we can get back out there and have a normal, per se, uh, Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. What up, Clarence? So let's talk, man. Uh, let's talk about some practice habits. Let's talk about some things that you can do uh, as a routine to develop good practice. Um, that's really... The way we practice is is basically the way that we play also. So the two are very much connected. So I think if you're disciplined um, in the way that you practice, that will go a long way. So come up with a routine uh, for practicing every day. Uh, so like for me, starting with the rudiments, selecting a couple of rudiments every day, like every that's every day, right? This is an everyday thing we're talking about now. And doing that every day, you know, practicing <clears throat> and slow, you know, we practice, let me tilt the camera down for a second so you guys can see, you don't need to see my face. I already know I'm pretty. So practicing slow. And really checking out where my hands are. So you see my hands are always, always in a place, right? Look, my wrists aren't, you don't see that at all, never. You see this. So that's how we go through, you know, so for practicing the rudiments, be very disciplined and go very slow. You don't have to go fast. Um, so that would be the first part of the, the practice day routine for me, right? I would do do the rudiments, um, then get into Chapin. Um, thanks, guys, for the birthday wishes. Get into Chapin, go through some chapters. Uh, then I have time where I, I try to apply all that, you know, and do do. How do I play the stuff that I'm practicing, you know? So. Um, and everything you're asking about, solos and fast tempos, all of that stuff, I would cover all of that in Chapin, you know, playing those exercises. Solos and fast tempos aren't solos and fast tempos. Solos and fast tempos, you just have to think half the time. And you don't have to play super fast. Your ideas can be spread out. Take your time. Take your time. That's why you learn to solo slow, and then you speed things up. Um... And yes, we practice the same rudiments with traditional and match grip, always. Um, and you should learn to play everything at a soft volume first. It's easier to play loud. Learn to play soft first. That's why we practice everything very slowly, very slowly. Um, what can I suggest with kit styles, you know, for going to jam set? Uh, 
Hi, Greg. Can you suggest which kit styles we need to know for going in? When you say kit styles, do you mean things to play? Yeah, you have to know how to play a bassa. You have to know a waltz. Yeah, I mean, you can, You have to kind of know a shuffle, all those things, playing jazz time. Um, thank you for the happy birthday also. Um, all of these things are important, right? <clears throat> I think one of the most other important things that people don't really cover and think about in, in terms of your routine also is listening, listening to records. Like you have to listen to the records. Like I can't stress it enough. Like if you're not listening to the records, then there's no way you can learn, you know, You got to learn all that phrasing and stuff. That only comes from listening to records. You're not going to get that out of a book. So that's that's where the that's where the work really comes in. That's where you understand, okay, this is how I learn, you know. So that's part of the routine of practicing. And then after that, so these are three or four steps I've done, right, in in my endeavor to practice. Then after that, then I have the next five rudiments. If that's the end of my day, then I finish with another five rudiments. So that's 10 rudiments a day. You did? So there's no way that you're not going to get better. You know, there's no way. And, and learning how to practice with these, you know. You see, I practice on both sides of the sticks. Right? Oh, let me put it down for you guys so you can't see. So, right? Ah, uh, fuck. Oh, did I say the curse word? Sorry. So all day I've just been working on this, right? And you've seen that. You've seen me on, on Instagram. You've seen me always doing this, right? So that's super important. No, I need to get back to practicing more piano for sure. Um, that's that's one of the things I, I, I want to get back to uh, for sure. That's, that's good in this time too because I've been off so... It's it's nice to be able to to uh, sit sit in the piano in the room with my roads and just go okay you know so yes uh, let's see should I set time aside for playing the ride cymbal and hi hat yeah of course set some time if you have time set it aside for practicing each element of the drum set get that uh get that ride cymbal and just walk the dog you know how we do it walk the dog 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 yeah, that's perfect. I agree with that. Good thinking, Brandon. Uh, Hutch, playing PPP and not lose your intensity and fullness of sound uh, so you don't sound wimpy. Well, you just got to go slow. That's why everything you do, you build your touch slowly. You can't build your touch if you're playing fast. So build your touch at slow volumes, low volumes, I'm sorry, and slow tempos so that you're getting a precise when you hit the drum, it's a precise sound, and you just have to understand how to control it. Play it down, you know, play lower. Uh, out of all 40 rudiments, which ones are the most essential? They're all pretty important. I mean, you try and understand all of them. I'm not Buddy Rich, so. And then you're going to have the ones that you use the most for how you play. So um, learn as much as you can. You know, definitely go through all of them. And then you're going to gravitate towards certain ones that, that fit your style of playing. So that that's the good thing. Um, what do I think about transcribed solos? Uh, yeah, the transcriptions are great, but do them here. 
do them, in, do them with your ear. Don't, don't really, this is great for when you're in school, writing, but when you're on the bandstand, there's no time to, to be like, okay, what is that, what is that, what is that phrase? No, you gotta know it. So do it with your ear. Yes, walk the dog. Build phrasing, you gotta listen to those records. That's how you, that's how you build tons and tons and tons and tons of phrasing. Learning all the great drummers who came before, listening to Blakey, Max, Philly, uh, Roy, Papa Joe, uh, so many, you know, Max, did I say Max? I did say Max. So, so many different drummers to listen to. So it's very important that you do that to get the history. Um, how do you get the stuff that you learn to flow naturally within a solo when you're copying? Well, it's the same answer. That's how I got it. I just listened to the records and took away, you know, I copied everything I heard and then I forgot how I heard it. So that way I had the knowledge in my head, but then I had to find a different way to play it. So, oh, uh, which record is best for Roy Haynes' Hi-Hat Secrets? Uh, any Haynes record you listen to, that's going to that's gonna do it for you. Any Haynes record that you listen to is, is perfect. <laughs> uh, odd meters are just like normal. It's like normal time. Um, I don't think about it any differently. You, you have to practice it and listen to it and feel it. Don't feel it as odd. Feel it as something that feels natural to you. You know, it should feel very natural, the odd time. You shouldn't be like, okay, damn, this is in three or... This is a nine or a seven or whatever. It's just you find the groove in it. Everything has a groove. Favorite qualities, uh, bass players. Good quarter note. Practice that quarter note. Give that quarter note full length. Walk the lines without any skips first. Learn to walk all those bass lines in different keys, you know. So for that's for bass player for me. Learn how to play on the beat, in front of the beat, and behind the beat as a bass player. And learn all sides of the beat. That way you can when you play with different drummers that play differently, you understand how to make it work, you know. Uh let's see. What about uh leading ideas with your left hand to change things a bit? Yeah, you can lead. I, I mean, there's no guys. You can do whatever you want to do. Whatever you can figure out how to do, you should do that. That's why you become an individual of how you are when you play. Like, come up with ideas how to do things differently. You know, understand how it's done and then come up with a different way to do it. You know, that's that's super huge. Uh... I heard this great story about my pudding friend. You got from yeah, hey, that's it, man. Uh, big band records. Do you suggest to start out with? Oh, that's hard. Big band records to start out with. Um, start out with Basie Ellington. Uh, you got so many big bands. That's the whole thing. The shit. I I probably start Ellington. You can start at LinkedIn. You can't go wrong, actually. All the lessons from K Wash changed me. Oh, thank you, Noel. Well, uh, yeah, all the lessons from, from K Wash changed. You know, K Wash is a master. He's great. And it, that's what gave me the discipline. for practicing. Okay, uh, first, oh, Joe Williams, yeah. Got to play, Joe Williams going back. I love that, man, thank you. Uh, could you demonstrate playing in front and behind the beat? Uh, actually, no, I can't demonstrate that right now because I'm not at the drums. That, so that one, that one is, um, 
But I give you how you can learn it, though. <clears throat> Listening to Lewis Hayes, right? Sam Jones. That's one beat. Philly Joe and uh, Paul Chambers. That's another beat. Then you could go... Let's see. Who else would I go after that? Good example. You could go Blakey and Jimmy Merritt. That's another example of another beat. Three different kinds of beats. So that's that's what you have to do. You see, when you listen to drum, when you listen to records, understand where the beat is. Um, and I would never practice that with a metronome. Um, you got to practice that with records. All this stuff is with records, guys. Everything that we do, except for the rudiments. Rudiments you practice with a metronome. Everything else. I would say practice to a record. Uh, sound levels every sixteen bars. I, I, no, you don't have to. You don't have to be so. Just understand playing soft. Uh, mezzo, you know, playing all the different levels. You you can vary it. it doesn't you don't have to say sixteen bars. You can. Then that's too calculated. Make it spontaneous. You know, I like to do spontaneous shit. It's like. Like if you practice in, you know, if you say, if you say, or you see what I'm saying? So there's a control there that you have, that you develop. So you don't have to do it every 16 bars, but that's it. Um, how do I develop a strong sense of when you are playing, for example, displacement? Um, I, you just have to feel that. You have to feel that. It's a. Sometimes you have to get lost to understand what getting lost is, and then you won't get lost. So some guys are, work out of books and they work. I'm not that kind of. I think books are great, but I, I like feel. I like like, what does it feel like when I go against the beat this way? Or if I want to do this, what is that supposed to feel like? Understand the tension, and then you understand how to get back to where the one is. Yeah, you get lost for a while. Don't worry about it. You 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 find it. You get, experiment. Get lost at home though, not on the gig. No, you don't change the ride symbol for the big band or anything like that. I mean, your playing changes. Yeah, you have to understand how to how the phrase for the big band, but your ride symbol is your ride, your beat is your beat. Don't change that. No, that never changes. Uh, uh. You just understand how to phrase differently for the big band, but your beat is your beat. That does that never changes. Uh, no problem. Elvin Garrison. Yep, yeah, that's another one. There you go. I like to play with the records. No headphones, Clemens. Headphones are too easy. So you set the drums up in front of the speakers, right? And you control, like you play at a certain volume, and then you turn the speakers down. And you keep playing where you were to see if you're matching up with what's going on. Then you turn the speakers even down even more. And try and keep good time. So it's really you can play games with yourself, but it, it, all of that develops your sense of time. I think um, single strokes. Oh yeah, you guys want to know about them single strokes? Let me show you them single strokes, baby. Single strokes. I developed. Now you can sit there and do this all day, right? You can do that all day, but. I like this better. Check this out. So I said, uh, right? Then three. Four. Then five. Then six. Do you see? Then you're already into the roll. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then 
right? You see how it works? Then you go seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you into the roll. So, foot technique. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me go back up. Uh, single strokes, yeah. Uh, get lost at home, not on the gig. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No problem, Clarence. Any tips for developing foot technique? Yeah, try and play the same rudiments that you're playing with your hands with your feet between a hi-hat and bass drum. That's a good way to do it. Uh, how do you organize multiple styles when you were younger? People say you have to master one style. It takes a decade. Yeah, you got to listen to records. You, 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 you. First of all, to master anything is going to take a lifetime. You're right. But if you listen to records, you get an understanding for what it should feel like or what, what it should be for you when you play music and it feels authentic. That's all you want to be is authentic, brother. That will be that you will master it by being authentic. Because you're always going to have a style of music that's your favorite, that you're the best, the better at. But that doesn't mean that you don't bring your flavor to everything you do. Uh, how do I organize practice most of it? But dividing my practice routine between oh, this is all the same person. Actually. Oh, multiple styles making make me weak in one: jazz, funk, Afro-Cuban, Brazilian, metal, modern jazz, fusion. Hey, try and do it all, man. Just go for it all. You young, do it all. Don't don't limit yourself, man. Uh, hold on. Richie go. There you go. Uh, a little different. Favorite Wilcox and so That's kind of hard, actually. been so long for Wilcoxon. Uh, just take your time with the styles, Sean. A little bit at a time, brother. A little bit of time. Oh, thank you, man. I'm still working. We're still working. We're trying to build some stuff. Let me tell you, repetition builds strength. So when you practice anything, if you just practice... Oh, new comments coming in. Okay. If you just start practicing things uh, and you re do them repetitively, you get better. Challenging gig and why? Most challenging gig. Wow. Maybe a gig I did with Lalo Schifrin. A lot of music, brand new music with Ray Brown. And it was called Esperanto. And I had to play with Tree Lock Gertrude. Ah. 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 He had this exercise. Uh, uh, uh. He gave me some shit that was so crazy, man. Tree lock, big, big up to tree lock, man. Uh, what has been your most challenging gig and why? I would say that. Do you think single strokes left hand lead has to be the same level to right? Yep, everything should be the same levels, guys. Both hands, both hands, both hands. Yeah, and, and practicing all styles, man. Just just try and get into everything. Whatever those, whatever you're into, you know, like whatever the music that you like, learn it authentically. That's the only way to do it. Uh, what do you have in mind when you're doing a solo? Please, let me just make it to the end. <laughs> That's what I have in mind, Marie. Oh, my God, I got a solo. Uh, no, what do I have in mind? The melody. The melody. I always have the melody in mind. Um if it's a free solo, it's a free solo. But other than that, I try and keep the melody in, in my mind, okay? How can a beginner do a single stroke roll? Like this, my friend. The slow, the other way. Not that way I just showed. So. That's how I would do the single stroke roll for you, my friend.
with Joe Hearn. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, advice from Joe, from them. Um, Griff, you know, the old school cats were different, man. They they played. They really knew records. They knew songs. You gotta learn songs, guys. You know, learn learn to play songs. Learn to swing. Like if if we're talking about jazz music, learn to swing. Learn what that shit is about, man. Like sometimes I feel like cats don't really want to swing. Mm. Griff was great though, cause he would he would always you know. Man, he he just always got in there. He always swung. Those tempos we play sometimes. And you, I don't know, man. It's hard to. I have to write the book for that one. Uh, but they always gave up good knowledge, and they always try to like give you something positive to take away. So those the old school cats were they were great for that, man. Uh, playing with Joe was the same thing. It was great. I mean, all the stories. Um, we went to we went to we went to uh, Spain with Joe Henderson. That was great, man. We went to play, and I think I told this with Tete Montalou, and Tete got drunk, and Joe was like, "Damn, that my." I don't know. He said, "He said, damn, I know he's blind, but he's deaf too." <laughs> Jesus Christ, Joe, crazy. Um, no, I don't remember the stuff. Tree lock. I got it written down somewhere. I'll post it as soon as I find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Tree Lock, Tree Lock's great, man. Jesus, Lord, that stuff was... It was crazy, though. I do remember that. Uh, do I have a type of practice pad? Well, actually, funny you should say that because I do like the Zymox, which is under this, right? But when you put this on top of it, it's, it gives it a different feel. play with Eric in a while, but we're all friends, you know, we, we'll play again. How to do a solo on the form. Uh, learn the form first. Think about the melody. That'll, that'll always help you out. You don't have to play a lot of stuff. Just think about the melody. Clemens asked, so I became very aware of my mind, taking good care. I saw you change your sitting position through the years. Yeah, so you don't ruin your back, man. You know, uh, sit straight up. Try to. Try to be as Straight, you know, right now is weird. I'm on the couch, so. And you guys are seeing all my stuff. Let me let you see all my stuff here. Wait a minute. Let's get this stuff out of view. Let's clean this up here. Y'all didn't say nothing to me, man. Okay. So, yeah, it's important to sit straight. That's very important. Sitting straight up. Good posture is important. So. Uh, how, uh, let's catch up. Uh, favorite modern records and drummer. Uh, f favorite modern records. Wow. Uh, favorite modern records. Oof. I gotta think about that, man. Yeah, I think that I listen to music different now, so. I don't really have favorite modern records and drummers. I, I listen to music so differently now, like I just in enjoyment. So it's kind of hard to pick a favorite. What am I listening to now? Completely other stuff than than actually some of it's not even real drummers playing. Uh, Jay Electronica, some other shit, uh, you know, some other things. So uh, rudiments with brushes on the pillow. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Do both. Lenny Robinson. What up, Lenny? Lenny Robinson. Woo-wee. Oh, that's a beast. That dude, Lenny Robinson, man. I've been knowing him forever. How you doing, Lenny?
So you got to get that in too, guys. You see, I'm always at it. Uh, back to questions. Uh, balance and uh, concerning balance in the jazz ensemble, where should the bass player sit relative to the drums and rhythm section? I like the bass player on the right. I mean, I used to have, when I played with Ray, the bass was on the left. So you have to find the best, the best, usually I would say wherever there's room, <laughs> that's really the case. Um, and where everyone can see each other, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and hear each other too. That's very important. Uh, I just love your sense of feel groove. You Blade Harlan are just killing it. Are you coming to Los Angeles Bay Area soon? I hope so, man. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, Hey, Lenny, I know you got some sticks in your hands, man. And you always got some sticks in your hands, brother. Yes, sir. And rehearsals with Ray Clem were incredible. Uh, hey, Rachel, are you controlling, like, when I say something? Because it's weird, because, like, the, the computer knows when I go to the next person. So that must be Rachel. Big up to Rachel Morgan on here, guys. She, she makes everything work. So are you going to, Rachel, is that you going to the next person? Let me, let's see. Let me see if I go to Lennon. What happens? So as well as my friend. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's see what happens if I go back up to. Just love your sense of feel groove. You played hard and just killing it. Oh, it is you. Okay, good. Okay. Um, you just mess with me. <laughs> How have you developed those brush shapes and patterns in your solo ideas? Just from listening to. Um, Listen to, to Papa Joe Jones and watching Kenny, you know, studying with Kenny, always sitting there watching the drum patterns and sounds. I'm mean, really into sounds. So it's really, you got, you just have to listen slowly and put your own ideas together, you know, work out in the room. I used to work out in the room and just be curious, like what I, what I could come up with that would be my own thing. You know what I mean? Uh, when I travel, I don't have much t too much time to practice. I don't even have access to a kid until the gig. How do you keep in shape? Unknown caller. That's that odd time shit. Hold on. Unknown caller. Sorry, unknown caller. Actually, it's not an unknown caller. Actually, guys, one of you is going to get lucky. Lauren, if you... Oh, I just said his name. Damn. Well, I have a friend... And he has been gracious enough. This is the second time he's doing it. He has paid for someone that I will pick to have a lesson. And he pays for it. So he's super cool. Um, and I will pick that at some point. Uh, and when I don't have much time to, to practice, that's why I've been practicing all this time now. Because I haven't had much time to practice. So... It's really important that you just keep your mind in the right place. That's why I'm always listening to the music. So when I can't practice, at least I'm still hearing the music. You know what I mean? First person to show me the symbol B for straight ahead. Uh, wow. I had a teacher who was in it. Oh, no, even before him. Hold on. Marvin Smitty Smith, actually, maybe. Yeah, that was my next door neighbor and my first teacher. So... You said chops versus rudimental drumming. Neither. I don't think either way. Nope. I would say musical drumming. Oh, she's the Starsky. Yeah, she runs everything for every. No, she's not here. She's she's uh with uh. Open studio. She helps make everything work, man. You don't. I mean, I don't. You can. You can get into that. But that's another conversation. Practicing scales and molds on the drums. That's, that, that would take... We, we have to have a whole other conversation. But that's a whole... That's like a very spiritual thing, I think, right there. That's the only way you can get to that part. So that 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 involves some meditative, introspective work that you have to do within yourself. Then you can get to that modes and shit like that. 
In terms of volume and jazz, how loud should the bass player? I, uh, I don't like loud. I don't like the bass super loud. It, everything should be relative to what's going on, you know, to the to where you're playing, the room you're playing in. Uh, just purchased the fundamentals of jazz. Do you have any tips on getting the most out of your course? Yeah, go slow. Take your time on each video, you know. That's how you get the best out of it. Don't go fast. You don't need to go fast. You got the video, so. How many hours a day did you practice when you were younger? A lot. A lot. Oh, Rachel. Uh oh. Okay, watch out. Uh, I practice tons, tons. Now, not so much, but back then, like six hours. Yeah, no, I don't put it. You know, if I'm learning some music for a gig, yes, it's on repeat. But otherwise, I just listen to it and just fall in love with the songs. Not to listen to it for any particular purpose, just to enjoy it. Lenny is in the house. You know that. So some more exercises for you. Uh, You see what that was? Switch. 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 No, guys, don't send me any videos. No, 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 no. That's not how I pick, sorry. Uh, yeah, I got tons of videos to look through already. That's why I say don't send me any videos now, because I'm backloaded with videos. Um, do I, do you recommend recording your practice session? You should always record yourself practicing. My favorite recording I ever made. Um, uh, favorite recording. I don't know, man. There's a few I like. I like Ray Brown stuff. Uh, Roy Hargrove stuff. Peter Bernstein. There's a few, man. You can check it out. You, you be the judge. Let me go back because I missed one of these questions. If I didn't play drums for a long time, like 10 years, and lost all your facility, and you decided to get back into shape, what would your practice schedule look like? The same, I'd be sitting there going, rudiments, 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 rudiments. That was it. You know, learn, get your hands back. If you were to imitate the sound of New York City, let me see. The subway has their own rhythm, so you can't really imitate that. That's kind of hard, because you hear the, the you hear the you hear the train speeding up, and now the trains are better. Back in the day, they was all scrunchy and shit. No, Arjun and walk the dog swing. Um, Justin the Chocho. That's that's where I got walk the dog from. Wiggling and jiggling, walk the dog, walk the dog. Yep. Uh, do you use heavier drumsticks for practicing with the pad? These are heavier. Yes, I have my normal sticks, but yes, these are these are a little bit heavier this time. Uh, I like it. This period has helped me get my hands really in shape. So, and practicing with the back of the sticks, like I told you guys before. Quarters and sixteenths. Both. We like both. The ritual. I have it here, actually. It's right here. No, but I'm working with it now. So that's 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 where. Oh, I'm already next one. I'm on for, uh, Farage. Any chance you know the origin name and the groove played by Blakey on Pensativa? Well, I mean, you could play it a few different ways. The origin, 
on Pet Sativa though, it's kind of like there's the version where it's like and then there's the one where it swings like a little bit more, right? So, okay, would by chance you know the origin or the name of the groove? Ah, the origin of the the name. Let's see, what were we, is that a name? It's, it's kind of like a bossa, uh, a, but just a very loosely played swinging bossa kind of groove, you know, like where he put the ding, ding, gang, 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 gang. It's okay. Almost kind of also like, I'm thinking of a name here. Hold on. This particular groove. Oh, shit, everybody. The questions are going on. Uh, oh, God, I missed a few questions. Sorry, guys. Uh, what do you think about coming up with? Oh, no, somebody. Okay. Uh, I'll get back to I'll answer you that one, Farage. Um, do you think it's too regimented? No. Practicing a plan? No. Have a plan for everything. That way you don't waste time. Oh, you associate, Pick and Stone associates New York City uh, subway. Okay, I got you. I got you. Favorite scene? Ah, uh, interesting. I don't know. Visit my favorite scene? Well, Paris has a great scene. I know a lot of cats there. Um. Mm, yeah, I probably, probably, probably Paris. Fanatical about tuning? Yes, just getting a good sound. Each drum is different, so you gotta. I mean, there's so many different ways to tune a drum, but each drum is particularly different. So you gotta understand the depth of the drum, um, the wood, and then find the sound that you like. You know. Uh, okay. I mean the exercise that I don't know. I showed you mean peace and groove. Uh, yeah, it's got it's got a second line thing to it also. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's got a, definitely a second line thing to it. It's in between the two. Fifty fifty. The practicing. What percent of your practice time was dedicated to playing to records? Fifty fifty. It changes all the time depending on what you need to do. Oh, my pleasure, man. Thank you. I'm taking the time anytime. What's my favorite simple groove? Uh, my favorite simple groove is maybe, I don't know, is maybe... Um, Maybe Blakey or playing a shuffle. Yeah, that's my favorite simple group. How important is to have your practice pad in the same exact position as your snare? No, I mean, you just gotta, you just have to understand how you're practicing. I the practice pad or snare drum practicing rudiments do away from the drum set. So it's always going to be different anyway. Okay, maybe I'll put a video up of me playing three card Molly. <laughs> Hey, we'll get back to Phoenix soon. We will definitely get back to Phoenix soon. Not a problem, man. But we just, you know, guys, get your, get your, the chess players. Sakima's Vision. That record is killing. You dig Blakey was Blakey, man. Oh man, I do that all the time. It's passive. This is a passive live thing I'm doing right now. Look, I'm just talking to you, but I'm really on the delay and I'm really watching the TV. Go, LeBron. Yeah, baby. Woo! And still hitting the right spot on my pad. Right?
right? You dig? So it's always, I mean, get it in when you can. If you if you if that's when you have time, that's what you have to do. You know, practicing is the most essential thing. I mean, if you have a dedicated time, you can do it. It's great. But if you have that situation like we just talked about now, and that's when you can practice the rudiments, do it. As long as you get the time in, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? It's not how, it's like, you don't have to be the drum set to do it. You can be on your pillow. It might be right before you go to bed. You might say, okay, I'm going to take 15 minutes. I'm going to hit the pad and I'm going to sleep. Well, I mean, luckily for you guys, it can affect you in two ways, good or bad. You can have a lot of records and learn a lot, or you can have a lot of records and not learn anything. So technology can be used for both. Um, if you're getting records and downloading records and listening to music, it's perfect. But if you're just doing it and you're not taking the time to learn, um, then that's a problem. So take, use the technology in a positive way. But go buy some vinyl, too. I love vinyl, man. Vinyl's the shit, man. Go invest your time in like spending the money. Mm. Oh, we try to make them all swing. Everything, singles, everything. It's just during this period that everything's gotten better because I've been home and I've been able to practice, man. Like when it, when we first started this lockdown, it was it wasn't like this. And then I just started practicing. I told you guys I started doing. Just these exercises like that. So you want to talk about practice, passive practicing? I would do this and just watch TV, right? Right. So that's how you do it. So that's how I did it. Every day you've been seeing me and then getting in shape, you see me, my face is shrinking right in front of you. My body is shrinking right in front of you. I've been losing so much weight, it's crazy. So. Hey guys, one of my favorite records of Blakey is the Witch Doc. Ah, well, the 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 shuffle I can I can tell you it's just a uh, you know, Blakey played a different shuffle. Comping is different. So some people think it's which yeah, is that's a normal shuffle. Well, Blakey says, but you don't hear that last one. You don't hear. You hear. Right? Okay. Yeah, man, get that, get that Charlie Parker, get those, get those uh, old Charlie Parker records and put them on, put them on the drums, man. Transcribe them with your ears, learn them, and then put them across the drum set. That's the best thing to do too. It's it's more fun when you do that because um, you have to really learn them. So you probably have to. Well, for you guys using iTunes, going back that way, but if you have a record player. You go back, you go back, you go back. So that's the fun part. On, oh yeah, on the drums. Yep. I'm going to get some more rudiments in here, and then we're going to go. So, 
You guys should have your pads and you should be practicing. Even though you're asking all these questions, you should be practicing the whole time you've been asking questions. You see me, I've been practicing the whole time y'all been asking, right? Betty Carter stories, let's see. Well, with Betty, you know, I always tell you guys, with Betty, it was about consistency. Um, Peter Martin can tell you too. Peter's, Peter, Peter played with Betty. Um, consistency was her thing. Mm, every night. No excuses. Mm, even your bad play. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, that's because I listen to the records, though, and I know how the, the, the shuffle should sound. So once you do that, you'll have it also. You know, it's just really listening. Everything I'm talking about is just has to do with listening and how you listen. So you learn all that stuff. Just go back slow and just put in the time. Guys, we got a lot of time now, so you, you can learn anything you want slowly. Slowly. Like me, right now, I'm trying to learn Ableton. Oh, this is a great platform. I love it. I can use this platform. So anyone who's really killing in Ableton, you should come hit me up because I'm trying to get my stuff together. So, yeah. Then you can hit me up. Now, this has been a lot of fun, man. Always answering you guys' questions. You know, you guys see me on Instagram, everything. You know how it works. Um... But this is a great platform for us, uh, all the open studio guys and, and ladies, to talk to you about life, about music. So that's why we come on here. So we appreciate the continued support that you give us. Uh, we know times are hard for everybody right now. We're just trying to make it so that everyone can have uh, their voice heard and and feel good. And uh, so I wish you guys a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of safe uh, spiritual awakening vibes um, that you stay positive and that you know we'll get through this and we keep playing some music but you got to shed now so that when we come through this you you be out there killing it right so you know what to do if you're gonna go to open studio go to open studio get those lessons yeah you you heard the deal 50 percent off for a little while um, but you can always hit me up because you know you get the open studio, you might still need to get at me. So Greg Hutchinson at me.com, G-R-E-G-H-U-T-C-H-I-N-S-O-N at me.com. And you get those personal lessons. Um, other than that, you got to listen and practice, man. So I wish you guys the best. I'm going to sign off. And. Uh, what I would say to you is try and be the best you can person first. Um, and each person is responsible for themselves. And in, in these times, what we're talking about is everyone being better and the world changing. So each person is responsible for their own actions. Um, and through that, we can make the world better. Um, everyone's life matters. How about that? So let's do that. Let's be positive. I love you guys. As we say in Never Never Land, peace out. All right, guys. Check you later. Bye.